say good afternoon or good morning. It's so, it's so funny because it's like late in Dallas, so <laughs> I don't know what time it is. <laughs> but we come from uh, the WePro Fellowship Program out of UNT Dallas. And today we're going to be discussing transforming instruction, one PLC at a time. And we are located in Lancaster ISD. Um, we are with the fabulous Brittany Preston, and she is a fifth grade science teacher uh, at Pleasant Run Elementary, and she's a LEAPRO fellow. Uh, also myself, I'm a LEAPRO fellow. I am the Innovative Lab STEAM Specialist at Beltline Elementary, and we are also with the wonderful Faith Malika, and she is our STEAM Enrichment and GT Coordinator for Lancaster ISD. So lucky to have her. So what exactly is a PLC? So according to the National Science Teaching Association, PLC stands for Professional Learning Community, and it describes how educators uh, engage in professional development in a collaborative and in an interactive and ongoing way. So this is something that we took on in order to, you know, just make sure that we all are uh, collaboratively, you know, uh, learning about science and STEM. Okay, so we, we're not the type of presenters that like to just give. Y'all going to do some work just like as if we're in the classroom. So uh, what I want you guys to do, you're going to have a few minutes as a table. I want you guys to talk about these questions, and then we're going to have a follow-up activity after that. So uh, the qu three questions, are PLCs held on your campus? If so, how often? Are the PLCs formed based on grade levels, content, or vertically aligned? and what components of the PLC are beneficial to educators in your eyes. So um, if you're not close to someone, just scooch over. We're gonna put on the timer. Once the timer sounds, we're gonna recommend. <laughs> you guys talked about as a table, I want you to list some of the benefits 
you feel, based on your conversations, would lead to an effective PLC. So you have two ways to join. You can use this QR code or you can go to menti.com and type in that code. You can skip past like any login information. And it's gonna give us a little word cloud. We're gonna see what responses come up multiple so times. It's not open for voting. It's not open, let me try it. Just a Maybe I could have something. Do you want us to respond in like single words then? Yes. Okay. about a minute on this. Love it. I know some of the words that I heard as I was walking around mm -hmm. through in your conversation. Mm -hmm. Inspiration, data, yeah, cohesive, yeah. Student achievement, teacher interest, yes, all of those. So as you can see, you know, what we see in our district is some of the same things you guys see. We see that collaboration. We see that change. We see that we base it off of student achievement and data. So we're going to go on and kind of explain our process through this um, topic as we went through it this school year. Okay, so the whole rationale with us doing these PLCs is Last year I did it and I led it for um, a group of our fellows. This was our project. They were fifth grade science teachers and it was amazing. We had a really great like relationship that by the end of the project, um, we really built up some like collaborative plans that we were able to like really enhance our lessons. We did steam nights on our campus. So it was a really great success. Um, so this year, um, we then kind of shifted into new roles at and some of us moved to different grade levels, but um, we then took it the, as leaders that were in there last year, we took a role as a leader. So, um, and we did it for our third through fifth grade science teachers. So if you look at this pie chart, we, um, in our district, we have a high turnover, especially since COVID, we've been like not able to find qualified teachers. So um, looking at this pie chart, the light blue is teachers with two or more years experience. Um, that was for third through fifth grade science teachers as well as our STEAM teachers. So the dark blue represents all the other teachers and what we're going to have to do because those are the rookies, right? Or those are, our district calls them innovative, um, yeah, we took an innovative approach and we, um, so if you are a corporate, um, business person or a banker and you are like, oh, I want to be an educator, we will hire you and then you are now a teacher and then you can go through the alternate program as you're teaching our classes. So you got zero instruction, experience, um, content, knowledge. So that makes that part of this dark blue. Um, it's an innovative approach to basically have a long-term sub in the classroom, but they require to go to all of our trainings and stuff. So um, it's been a fun year of learning for everybody. Um, <laughs> so our hope was that by doing these PLCs and having my um, to kind of help with leading them, that we could increase their content knowledge, their pedagogy, right? Like they had no clue, but a lot of them about instruction. And um, knowing that STEAM is a major focus in our district, really understanding STEM pedagogy as well. So um, instruction, STEAM, and science were all very, very, very much um, focused on within our PLCs. 
this year. So um, that's just a little bit of rationale and background on the Lancaster ISD and what we need. So right here, you will see the um, fellows that, and myself, and what areas we kind of focused on to um, help support our teachers. So um, Mr. Burkhalter moved to sixth grade. He uh, led as dean of students, and he facilitates the science. We had Ms. Becker, who is now an assistant principal. She led on, on her campus and at the district level. And Ms. Um, Hatley is one of our STEAM teachers, and she kind of took the initiative and led um, the PLCs for our STEAM teachers. We did do some together, but most of them were separated. Um, sometimes if we had district days, we'd start together and then we'd separate after that. So um, for the most part, every uh, month we met, except for December, that was our month off. Um, and then how we determined what we were gonna talk about is um, first we looked at like our scope and sequence, our district um, calendar to see like what's coming up, what topics. And I tried to align like the STEAM classrooms to be an extension of the learning within the core areas. Um, and then um, based on like some classroom observations, what I'm seeing like, oh, these are some areas that we need to focus on for the upcoming PD, as well as what teachers um, requested or what they were given on our surveys from the previous PLC. So that's kind of how we determined what was gonna be, um, and there was some shifting based on what we thought we were gonna address and what actually was addressed. But that's our process of how we facilitated these PLCs. So, some of our sessions that we included this school year was the first one making connections with STEAM, and that's when we first integrated the two. Um, prior to this year, science was pretty much doing their own thing, where STEAM was doing their uh, training separately for science. So this was our first time connecting together. And ever since then, we've been, you know, like we, we'll start together and then we'll break off and go work in our uh, divided areas. So uh, after doing this session, we talked about data and how we can use that data to drive interventions. We talked about how to include the vocabulary in the classroom, um, using backwards design to plan our lessons, to prep them as we're going into like the testing season, and then um, the engineering instruction for science. So we were able to not only get into the science content and the pedagogy of what we needed in the classroom, we connected a lot of the STEAM aspects with these things. So not only did we talk about these things, each session included some type of STEAM uh, portion within the session. So piggybacking off of what uh, Ms. Preston was saying, um, we also had our own uh, sessions, our PLC sessions, and we did collaborate with the science teachers, which was very refreshing. There are uh, five other teachers like myself in the district at, a, at each elementary level. And so it was very important that we made connections with the STEAM and science. And we actually got an opportunity this year for the first time in the three years that I've taught. Um, this is the first time that I was able to collaborate with science teachers and give a visual presentation or an experiment um, based off of the content that they learned in science. So that was refreshing. We also learned about Ozobot coding, which I saw some Ozobots downstairs. I was so excited. Uh, TechSmart coding, we, uh, we would use a program called TechSmart, and so we all had to do a training on, on that. Uh, Tinkercad and MakerBot 3D printing, we used Tinkercad as our uh, resource to create things to print in the 3D printer, so we all had to do a training. Um, an engineering design process. This was so cool. So we had the NASA challenge and the space capsule. So of course you guys know that the Eclipse came through Texas. And so we just had a whole space uh, presentation like for at least about a month where we talked about space. And so to actually work with the teachers and get the kids momentum built up about the space program and also tie in the fact that the eclipse is coming and to see their faces on that day was absolutely incredible okay so what we did was uh, before each session we gave a pre-survey based on like whatever topic and their comfort level so we had them like our confidence level teaching it on a scale of one being completely uncomfortable and five being oh i'm confident i rock this i'm pretty much like a veteran i got this i don't know slip. so that was five so we did that for each really like focused topic that we wanted to address. And so you'll see that um, some areas we had significant gains and then some were like eh, mediocre. And then some of them I think 
overly more confident in their, like, I, I don't know, you know, like, I'm the only three neutral, you know, like, I have a lot of threes, and I'm like, I don't know, I've been in your classroom, maybe you were overthinking that one, but, um, so, I, I think that, you know, like, I, I, I gotta admit, I'm probably one of those people, too, like, I don't really like to put it on paper if I don't feel confident in it, and I guess that could be part of the survey, but we do build that trust, so, um, I think that this does show some areas that we have still some to touch for next year, moving into next year. But I do think that like areas that I would like to see, like the last one. So a lot of times PLCs in our district are required and not optional. Um, so we do do like required district PD days. And a lot of times you're like, this isn't relevant to me. Uh, this is a waste of my time. So that was kind of where they were at before at 3.75. But after our year together, it's nice to see that they all thought, okay, like this pertains to my instruction, this was relevant, it wasn't a waste of my time. Like that is, I think, the most important one that I want to walk away with because they're going to be more likely to be attentive and willing to try new things whenever they feel like it's beneficial for themselves. So I'm um, going to next year. I think that that's a really great um, point that based on our impact for this project that we did. And before we move on, just to piggyback, I was one of the teachers that was in the first round of these uh, professional learning communities as a teacher. And now that has given me an opportunity to, you know, kind of grow. Even though my position has not grown, I'm a teacher, but I'm able to now work with uh, Faith and provide these professional uh, developments for other teachers that are new to the content. So some areas of strength uh, that we noticed throughout this was the alignment amongst uh, other grade levels as well as STEAM teachers. So it was the elementary campuses and the STEAM teachers. So it wasn't just our grade level. We got to you know interact with everybody. And then some areas of opportunity uh, because of our school calendar, sometimes uh, our educators were in attendance. Our professional development days uh, some teachers did have the option to kind of like take off that day. So just the the number of people attending uh, kind of fluctuated throughout the school year. But it was still an overall great experience. We would love for you to come visit us at Lancaster ISD. And there is a debate on whether it's pronounced Lancaster or Lancaster. I'm not sure either. But we would love for you to come visit either one. Um, these are our email addresses. Please feel free to write those down and contact us. Uh, but we would just love to have you come out and see what we're doing. And we would love to get some input from you all as well. So thank you so much and for thank listening you. to us. And we hope you enjoyed it. Okay. Well, Matt. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you guys want me to leave this up so you can get our emails? I don't know if you want to do it or not.